Hello and welcome to another Morris Group International product maintenance video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to break down a single temp valve and change it from metering to non-metering, from non-metering to 9 volt, from 9 volt to 24 volt. These are the tools you'll need, a pair of channel locks, flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver and 5 16 wrench. Okay, before we begin, what you want to make sure that the valve you're working on is not connected to a water supply at all. You can see the check stop strain in here doesn't have a braided hose. Or your water supply that's feeding this valve is turned off at the main supply. Otherwise, you're going to get soaked. So here we have a single temp, non-metering servo motor valve. What we can do here is take off the four screws. Okay, once we have these four screws loosened, we can go ahead and start taking it apart. Lifting up from the motor housing body here, you're left with a valve body and a water diaphragm that pulls out just like that. Okay, underneath the servo motor, you have the pilot orifice plate. Just like that, stainless steel with the rubber pieces on both sides. One flat, one cone shape. Below, you have the pilot or face plate spring. Here you have the actuator cup. Then we'll take off the cap. And inside, you'll see it's bare on the top side. Then you have the actuator direct acting diaphragm with magnet and diaphragm spring. Spring goes in the center of the diaphragm like so. Goes on top like this, facing down towards the middle of the body with the diaphragm on top. Then your cap over that. Then underneath, put your spring right in the center now remember, this spring is smaller than the spring that's in the upper chamber up here. Then your pilot orifice plate with the cone facing up towards the body, inside like that. Okay, but now we're going to change this valve into a metering valve. Here's our metering servo motor, how it comes when you order it. Part number 2563-020-002. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. Pull out the water diaphragm. Now this plastic seat that comes with the water diaph diaphragm like this, this plastic seat is for a brass valve body. If you do not have brass, if you have plastic like you see here, you don't need this. Go ahead and throw it away. Take this diaphragm and we're going to place it on top of the valve body like so. Now here is the metering servo motor. Normally what I would tell you is keep the rubber bands on. Just go ahead and place it on top here and put it down. But I'm going to show you a breakdown of this servo motor. So we're going to take that apart. And we're going to lift this cap here. First, you'll notice that you have your copper spring here. Then you have your diaphragm. Not to be confused with the water diaphragm, it's the air diaphragm. Then, underneath that, you have your magnet and upper chamber spring. Put it back together, you want this large spring to face down towards the center of the body with the magnet going down with it. Then the diaphragm sits over it just like that with the little protrusion sticking up towards the top of the cap. Because what you do is then you put your spring over that, like so. Okay, and easier with the screws out. You're gonna go ahead and place, see that little groove in the center of the top here? That's where your spring is gonna go. And it's gonna clamp down just like that and then your screws in like so. Okay, then we're gonna flip it over. Underneath, you'll find the pilot orifice plate, just like a nine metering servo motor. With a flat piece and cone and a spring. So to put it together, just make sure the cone on the pilot orifice plate is facing up towards the spring. Then 
We're gonna place this on the valve with the timing adjuster right here facing away from the elbow so that way you have room to change it. Then you're gonna tighten these four screws. Now that we've changed from non-metering over to metering, the cool thing about this is if you want to change back to non-metering where you have to hold the button down for the water flow to come out, all you have to do is take the nut off like I just did and move it to the top chamber up here. So you don't have to disassemble this one to change it to non-metering. You do have to take apart the non-metering and swap it out for the metering servo motor if you want to go to this direction. But going back to non-metering like this one, all you have to do is take the nut off of the timing needle here and place it on the top cap right there. Now, when I press it, it's no longer working off a vacuum. You actually have to hold the button down to keep air pressure on that pilot orifice plate. So now I'm going to show you how to change the metering server motor over to a nine volt solenoid and then to a 24 volt solenoid. Now this is just to show you how simple it is to modify this valve to fit your need. However, just note that switching over from a metering server motor to a solenoid does not completely happen just by swapping the solenoid and the servo motor. You also need a way to actuate the solenoids. For these, you will need an eye sensor or a piezo button to get them to work. In order to change this over to a 9 volt solenoid, you'll need this bonnet and these shorter screws here. So first what you want to do is remove these four screws. Okay, once we have these four screws loosened, go ahead and take this off. And I'm going to show you the difference between the screws here. So this is the screw out of the metering servo motor. And this is the screw out of the solenoid bonnet. See the difference? One is half the size of the other. And that's because the distance from where the bonnet screws into the valve body is much shorter than the metering servo motor. So you're going to take the bonnet, you're going to place it over the valve body here, and then you're going to tighten down these four screws. Now that we have our four screws tightened down on this bonnet, you have adapted it to receive a 9 volt or 24 volt solenoid. So with the 9 volt solenoid, all you're going to do is place the o-ring that comes with it inside this bonnet here which i've already done so there's a small o-ring we're going to place it right inside this bonnet right in the center then you're going to take your solenoid and just twist it on top here once it's twisted on securely fastened hand tightened then you would take what your eye sensor or your piezo button and you would connect it to that and a transformer to get it to work. Then to change over to a 24 volt solenoid, all we're going to do is just turn this off by turning it counterclockwise. Okay, we can leave that o-ring in there. And then what we can do is take the larger o-ring and this goes on top of the bonnet cap here. And then we just take the 24 volt solenoid and we thread it on just as we did the 9 volt. And the same thing goes with this. You'll need a 24 volt transformer and an eye sensor or a piezo button to actuate this 24 volt solenoid. Now I'm going to show you how to take this valve completely apart and off the plate for further maintenance. So you'll need your 5 16 nut driver here. You're going to loosen up or remove these two screws here. Okay. Okay, now that check stop strainer is gonna pull out. See how it's a push-in fitting? That's what allows you to pull it out. As soon as you remove those two screws, you can pull it out. Now to take the valve body off, we're gonna remove that screw there. Right underneath the valve here. Okay, once that screw is removed, we have now taken the valve completely apart. Now, so put it back together. This groove here 
you're gonna line it up with this hole here. So we're gonna do this with it in our hand, like so. And then we're gonna place the screw into the body. Now our valve body is tied down, and it won't be able to move. Okay, once we do that, take your tech stop strainer. You're gonna push it into this valve body, like so. Then you're gonna take your 5 16th nut driver, and you're gonna to start to thread the upper screw here. But don't go all the way down yet. What you wanna do is push the check stop strainer with your thumb behind here, and your finger, on the valve up here for support before you tighten it down and then squeeze as you tighten it down. What this does is it keeps the check stop strainer pushed in to the valve body here. Since it's a push in fitting, this is what keeps it together. You don't want it to back out at any time because then you'll run into leaks. Okay, so once we have the front screw tightened, we're gonna go to the back screw here. Tighten that down. So that's a complete breakdown of this valve. 